The hospital-at-home model of care is emerging as an important strategy to improve value during the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. Welcome to Advancing Health, a podcast from the American Hospital Association. I'm Tom Hederly with AHA Communications. Hospitals across the country are launching or expanding their hospital-at-home programs. As they do so, they're creating new care teams designed to deliver acute care outside the walls of the hospital. Unity Point Health in Iowa is one healthcare system that has grown its hospital-at-home services over the course of the pandemic. In this podcast, AHA's Julia Resnick, Director of Strategic Services, speaks with Dr. Peter Reed, Medical Director of Hospital to Home at Unity Point Health, about what it takes to build a care team that can get a hospital at home program off the ground. Julia, over to you. Thanks so much for joining me today, Peter. Let's jump right into the conversation. So I'd like to start with your journey. You've gone from being a hospitalist to doing hospital at home. Can you tell us about what inspired that transformation? Yeah, my introduction to this transformative work was slightly serendipitous. In 2016, while still working as a hospitalist, I was approached to review and give my opinion regarding the potential implementation of the Johns Hopkins Hospital at Home Program for Unity Point Health. This review led to a small proof-of-concept pilot. The pilot utilized no new FTE and was added on to the existing hospitalist and home care models. We focused on an early transition model where patients were initially admitted to the hospital and then the following day were enrolled to complete their hospitalization at home under this program. We had one hospitalist, myself, and one clinic physician and one nurse. The hospitalist would be responsible for coordinating the transition from the hospital to home, while the clinic provider would see the patient the following days and the nurse would provide twice daily nursing visits. We enrolled 10 patients under this pilot. Following this pilot, I went back to being a hospitalist until being approached again by senior leadership in 2017. By then, senior leadership was looking for ways to advance the development of our ambulatory division. And because of our large in-house resources, such as home care, home infusion pharmacy, home medical equipment, launching a hospital-to-home program did not appear to require significant additional capital, contracting, or investment. The data from our pilot reinforced our system readiness to implement the program and confirmed our ability to generate the desired quality, financial, and patient experience outcomes. By late 2017, I was approached about applying our lessons learned during our pilot program and starting our hospital at home program. Seeing a new challenge and the opportunity to build something from the ground up, I left my post as a hospitalist and jumped right in. That is great. And that makes you the perfect person to answer this next question. What does it really take to get a hospital at home program off the ground, especially in terms of operation and staffing and, you know, how to make this work? Yes. Leadership for the program needs to include clinical and operational expertise. This dyad is integral. The ideal operations partner understands the organization's governance, the strategic vision, and has a background in integration. That partner needs to be excited by transformational work. Your clinical leader will need to be more than just good at medicine. They will need to be excited for the transformation, willing to be uncomfortable and grow from the lessons learned. With our model, we are a population health service line. Therefore, we optimize our capacity in traditional billing by offering a suite of services. Those range from urgent and interventional to proactive and preventative services. Acute hospital replacement is one service that highlights our urgent and interventional care. So staffing models may vary depending on the vision and resources for the program. Since we incorporate acute hospital care at home or hospital to home under our umbrella, we currently operate with one physician and one nurse practitioner in our central Iowa location. We are in the process of adding more nurse practitioners to meet our increased volume. We have four nurses on our team, and their time is spent between our acute hospital at-home patients and our proactive and preventative services. Additionally, we have access to administrative assistance, a nursing call center, analytic support, and marketing. We benefit from the strategic system resources that are available to us at Unity Point Health. 
we have come to refine our units of service that we have adopted from traditional home-based care models. We expect that each full-time equivalent to, at a minimum, produce six units of service per day. The unit is measured as an 80-minute block and includes all drive time, documentation, visit, and care coordination. For example, a new patient would be two units and a follow-up patient would be one unit. Our goal is a mix of new and follow-up visits resulting in a minimum of four patient encounters per day. Right now, our physician and nurse practitioner rotate on call each week. The on-call provider is available 24 seven to our enrolled patients and is the point contact for enrollment. We enroll Monday through Friday, eight to five. However, we recognize that individual patient needs impact these standard hours. We round on our active patients seven days a week, rain, snow, or shine. As we add more to our team, the on-call requirements will, of course, decline. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about the care team. Who needs to be on the team and, like, what is the right mix of professionals? How should they interface with one another? I want to highlight that the mix of professionals needs to be sustainable. So going back, we track our productivity for our entire team. We have come to refine our units of service that we adopted from traditional home care based models, and we expect each full time equivalent to, at a minimum, produce six units of service a day. A unit is measured as an 80 minute block and includes drive time, documentation, visit, and care coordination. For example, a new patient would be two units and a follow up visit would be one unit. Our goal is a mix of new and follow up visits, resulting in a minimum of four patient encounters per day. Having a physician champion that can support a team of nurse practitioners and nurses is the most efficient. We are currently exploring that right mix, and I think it'll be close to one physician to every four to six nurse practitioners. The number of staff has really depended on these productivity targets. Each day, we have a 15-minute huddle with providers and nurses to discuss our active hospital-to-home patients. The huddle is separate from our interdisciplinary team meeting, where we involve representation from our service lines as we present each admitted patient. Throughout the day, we utilize secure texts, email, and voice calls to remain connected. Great. And I'm sure it's quite a change of mindset to go from practicing medicine in the hospital to a hospital in the home. So what personality traits or skills do you think make someone successful as a hospital at home provider? And do you have any stories that could bring that to life? I will validate that your assumption is correct. It is a change. Skills such as inserting an IV or drawing blood, those can be learned. But for someone who's interested in still treating patients but wants a change from traditional hospital setting, this is a great option that keeps their expertise and experience within the organization. In addition to the clinical skills, a provider must have strong communication skills and the ability to collaborate across the care continuum with colleagues and family members to provide the best care possible. The personality traits of a successful hospital to home provider include ambition, they're always inquisitive, willing to fail fast, and not afraid to challenge authority. Providers will go through a stage of interpersonal growth and those who can self-reflect and grow from their successes and opportunities will be the most successful. One story that comes to mind revolves around overcoming historical practice patterns. This highlights ambition and challenging authority. I was alerted to a patient in the emergency department who is newly diagnosed with pneumonia and now on oxygen and otherwise stable. When I approached the ED physician, they reiterated how the patient was now on oxygen and had to be admitted to the hospital. We agreed that the patient needed to be in the hospital and I was able to show them that we could provide the same interventions at home continuing their IV antibiotics, their oxygen, with daily physician rounds and twice daily nursing rounds at a minimum. At the elbow coaching for this ED provider allowed us to enroll this patient into hospital to home. That's great. It sounds like a much better place for that patient to be treated. So how is your hospital at home program adapted in response to COVID-19? So COVID-19 has increased our demand for all of our home-based services, including hospital to home. The increased volume is for COVID and non-COVID patients. We've enrolled 161 patients and were able to avert 114 hospitalizations and 73 ED visits. Using just hospital to home, we were able to achieve a $900,000 shared savings. Before COVID, we had three pathways into our hospital to home program. 
patients would either enroll following an ED visit, hospital stay, or even directly from a primary care at home visit. In the beginning, with so many unknowns, we helped the surge by focusing on enrolling more non-COVID patients, opening up capacity for our COVID patients in the hospital. As we evolved, we began to enroll COVID-positive patients completing their hospitalization at home. Now, we enroll COVID-positive patients right from their ED visit. One driver leading us to enroll more patients is the barrier of obtaining reimbursement for short-term oxygen. One driver leading us to enroll more patients is the barrier to obtaining reimbursement for short-term oxygen. We worked with Unity Point Accountable Care, our ACO, to develop a waiver that allows us to dispense short-term oxygen to overcome reimbursement. For our other population health services, we have adapted to COVID by developing pathways to deliver the COVID-19 vaccine to those unable to obtain one through traditional pathways. We are also testing patients for COVID-19 who are unable to leave their homes. In the future, we would like to begin administering monoclonal antibody treatment in the home for those COVID-positive patients at high risk for complications. Great. And so I'm sure that you've learned a lot over the course of implementing this work. So can you share some of those lessons learned as you've been working on Hospital at Home for Unity Point? Yes, of course. The right team is the essential element, onboarding members who embody the never give up or a MacGyver-like spirit. On top of that, you want a team that is cared for the acutely ill and can anticipate the barriers to providing care in the ambulatory space. For example, You'll need to be cognizant of antibiotic dosing frequency or the transport time for lab samples. You can teach just about anyone to start an IV or draw blood. However, being resourceful is a little harder to learn. Absolutely. And what's next for Unity Point in this space? So at Unity Point, we will continue to build equity for our communities through the growth of our population health service line by improving our ambulatory bundles, integrating outpatient palliative care, skilled nursing rehab at home, and expanding across our system. Well, that's exciting. And thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me, Peter. Your efforts are really an excellent example of how hospital at home can improve value for patients and communities. And at the AHA, we really look forward to hearing about how your work continues to grow. So for more podcasts and additional resources to help you promote value in your community, please visit the Value Initiatives website at www.aha.org slash the Value Initiative. That's it for today, and thanks so much for joining us.